Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Airgun Channel. So just to get us started, some of you who have no idea what we're talking about when we say PCP, it stands for pre-charged pneumatic. And this right here is what you would call a PCP with a small tank. So this right here could easily be filled with a special 4500 PSI hand pump. This one's from Hatsan. It's pretty cool. It has moisture filters in the handle right there. The most common way, especially if you have a gun with a bigger tank, let's say you had something like this 9mm Evanix Monster. Now this gun has two tanks and it's going to be a little hard to fill with a hand pump. So what most people use is a scuba tank. Now this is a carbon fiber 4500 PSI scuba tank. So there's a link to the video below if you want to learn how to get yourself one of these for cheap and get your whole rig set up going. Now it's always important even if your hand pump or whatever has a filter run a secondary moisture filter because you want to keep moist air out of this gun. Now what most people do is they take their scuba tank like this to the scuba shop fill it for about 12 bucks and you're good to shoot for let's say two weeks a month depending on how much you shoot. Well, let's say that you have a brand new Avanix Monster in 9mm like this which would never happen because I'm the only one in the world who has one brand new that is I have not got a chance to shoot this but there was a coyote walking right across my yard in broad daylight the other day so that's why I got this thing out and it may come sighted in I don't know which one I'm gonna use yet for that guy so anywho when you get to the point of shooting a lot you get tired of going to the scuba shop one time I shot five days in a row and there's no way I could have gone to the scuba shop and so I used my PCP compressor to fill my tank. All right, so this right here is the mighty Yong Hang and this is what I started pumping my big scuba tanks up with. Now I've seen these for as little as $199 shipped to your front door. So you can watch the Yong Hang video, link in the description if you want to know more about this bad boy. So the way this guy works is he basically, this is a water system. So you put these two ends in a bucket of water, it pumps it through one and back out the other and it just keeps cooling it as you're doing your compressing. Plug that into a 110 volt and stick a moisture filter between this and your tank and you're good to go. It'll pump your tank right up to 4500 PSI. It does take about 40 minutes. However, about every five or ten minutes you need to come by and go Psh! and it shoots a little bit of moisture out here. Now as time went on, the amount of moisture that would come out every five or ten minutes became more and more. And to the point where mine was spitting out uh, water oil mixture. And if you have an inline filter, then that's not going to make it to your tank, but it's just not good. Obviously you don't want to put moist air into your air guns or it can rust the tank. I have blown up two young hangs. This one right here, I left it pumping and was working on some targets in the yard and I came back and well, this hose had fallen out so it was actually shooting steam out that hose and pumping by itself. It still had my tank pumped up but anyway that's how I kind of blew up that one. I think I blew the head gasket and now it still pumps up tanks but there's a lot of oil and water in the moisture relief valve. So anyway, I've blown up two of these. The other one I fell asleep and, and blew it up that way. So I've gone through two of these in about six months probably and I thought it was time for something new. Now there's really no middle ground when it comes to filling your big scuba tank. Now you can get a, a Nomad or Hatsan's got one. There's a lot of these ones you can plug into your car battery and pump your gun up but they won't fill a whole tank. So you're looking at about $1,500 if you want a compressor that's going to fill your full-size scuba tanks. And that's where the compressor Benj 4 the 500 PSI HPA1 comes in. Okay, so there's a lot of different choices for what you can get when you're ready to spend your uh, 1500 approximately on a good air compressor. Now, if you're gonna shoot your PCP once a week, once a month, you don't really need one of these. Now, if you're gonna shoot your PCP, you wanna shoot your air gun every single day, fire at will, then you do need a quality one of these. There was a long time when I was like, heck no, if I have $1500, I'm spending it on a quality rifle. Okay, and I'll get by with whatever air I can get in there, but I reached the point where buying one of these didn't seem like such a bad idea, and I did it. 
Wow, nice. All right, guys, it looks like we have a quick start guide. It's basically a big card that's going to give you uh, everything you need to get started right off the bat. Nice, so I'll read through that. Oh, I don't like the look of that. Just kidding. I don't like to work on stuff, so hopefully I can not break this one. So we got a bag of attachments and everything it looks like you'd need to get started, including one of those is really handy. Looks like a high quality fill whip with a little moisture. These go in there. Got some O-rings for right there. And possibly some of those looks like we got some gaskets when you're ready to rebuild this bad boy. And this is probably a breathing oil filter cap, which my young hang had, and I think I recognize that. Now all we got is this awesome handle sticking out. Wow, that is quality right there. Wow. Freaking awesome. Super fancy. Look at all these awesome buttons. And look at that box right there. That is about half the size of all the other PCP compressors out there. Weighing in at just 44 pounds. There it is, you guys, in my opinion, the awesomest PCP compressor out there. Take a gander at that profile, baby. All kinds of awesome buttons and switches. Ready to go. So that's it, you guys. Here's what it comes packed in if you're curious. It's got these foams on each side, so it's pretty well protected. All right, you guys, I'm going to read what Benjamin has to say about this and some hardcore stats from Pyramid Air, and then we'll figure out how to put this thing together. All right, this is called the Benjamin Recharge HPA High Pressure Air Compressor. It has a max fill of 4,500 PSI, so you go to 4,500 PSI with this baby. It's for air gun, paintball cylinders, and tanks only. Less than 6.8 liters, which that covers everything, don't worry. 110 volt with standard three-prong US plug. Automatic pressure shutoff. So you set the pressure, stops at set pressure. That's awesome. Automatic shutoff after 30 minutes of continuous runtime. And that's actually the reason I bought this because I fell asleep with one of my young hangs on and I never want to know when I'm going to get distracted or have an emergency or something. So... I know that this is always going to shut off after 30 minutes. Heck yeah. No other PCP compressor that I saw offered that. They all shut off with the automatic pressure, but they don't all shut off in 30 minutes. It's air and water cooled. It's got a safety burst disc. Female quick disconnect filling on the end of hose. We already checked that hose out. It's awesome. It's ready to go with a 1 8 foster fitting quick disconnect. Now, the other reason I bought this, number two reason, is it only weighs 44 pounds. Half the weight and size of... Other, any other compressors. Also, it was so light that they didn't charge me the $50 freight fee that I would have had to pay had I ordered the Hat Sand Lightning, which I did at first, but then I called back and changed my order. Got the last one too. Now the dimensions are 17 inches long, 7 inches wide, and 16 inches high. Amazing. That's going to tuck right in under my desk or my sink or wherever I want it to go. That's awesome. Now here's some stats on fill time. It says it's going to fill a Discovery Maximus or a Maximus, which has the smaller tube that I showed you in the beginning on that little gun. From 0 to 2,000 PSI in 45 seconds, this bad boy right here. So you can fill a small air gun cylinder tube 45 seconds, hooking this directly to your gun. Now an Armada or a Marauder takes 1 minute and 40 seconds. That's a slightly bigger air tube. And it fills a 90 cubic inch buddy bottle which is basically a paintball size bottle from 0 to 4500 in 14 minutes so here's the description that pyramid air wrote for this bad boy hey pcp air gunners stop slaving over an unwieldy manual pump or driving all the way to the scuba shop already with benjamin's recharge high pressure air compressor you'll have all the air you need at your fingertips whether to recharge an air gun directly or fill up a tank or two to use in the field Using a standard U.S. three-prong plug for 110 volt outlets, the recharge is ready to do just that right out of the box in the convenience of your own home or wherever your air gunning travels take you. There's no need to worry about overfilling or damaging your valuable air guns. Its built-in automatic shutoff function 
stops the compressor at a set pressure. It also shuts off automatically after 30 minutes of runtime, and it features a safety burst disc to prevent dangerous excess pressure. It's also air and water cooled. There's actually a radiator in there. Reaches a maximum fill pressure of 4,500 PSI and is for air guns, paintball cylinders, and tanks up to 6.8 liters. So check out Benjamin's Recharge High Pressure Air Compressor today and give your shoulders and your odometer a well-deserved rest. So that's it, guys. I'm hoping this thing is easy to use, fairly dummy-proof, and I don't have to rebuild something on it every two weeks like the Yang Hang. Learning the parts of your air compressor. A. Air compressor. B. Hose filter. C. Bleed release valve. D. Pressure gauge. E. Quick connect foster fitting. Let's put it right here. F is your carry handle. G is the temperature indicator. K is this rubber plug. L is the water tank. So M is actually under here. It is an exhaust port. N is the temporary sealing plug right here where your oil cap goes, your breathing oil cap. Speak of the devil, O is your black oil breathing tube. P is this water level indicator window, and you can see it's located right under the water input right there. Q is the oil level indicator, located right at the bottom there. And then of course it's gonna tell you your oil level. You want it a little bit above the red dot right there. S is the breaker button. Right here, T, is the burst disc safety valve. So if the pressure gets too high, that just pops a little disc in there. You unscrew that, put a new disc in, and screw it back in. And U is spare parts. So J is the power cord. Now on to assembly instructions. Okay, boys and girls, I got some air compressor oil for all oil lubricated air compressors. Remove the temporary red sealing oil plug from the air compressor motor located in the front of the air compressor. Right there. Check out who this was tested by. I trust that guy. So this is what they're talking about. There's basically a plug right here where your breathing oil cap is going to go. So they want you to remove this red plug. There we go. Using a small funnel, fill the oil compressor until it reaches the appropriate fill level. The oil level should be in between the middle and the top of the red dot located in the center of the oil level indicator window. Do not overfill. So guys, it looks like it took about 14 ounces of oil. 14 of my 16 ounces. All right, number four, screw in the black breather tube into the motor casing. That's where we just put the oil. Look at that, it's so important that I even put breathing rod on there. Now guys, don't use a pair of pliers to crank this on because I did that with my Yang Hang and broke that sucker right off. Okay, I was able to get that on. With just my fingers. Just finger tightened it. Looking good. Crap, I don't know how they found me again, but I think I could finish this video before the cops get here. All right, let's see. Locate the male foster fitting in the air compressor. Okay. Look at that, it's all on the same side. Air output, okay. Connect the fill hose to the air compressor using the quick connector. Think I can handle that? I am being careful not to get any dust on any of this. Okay, you want to keep dust away from all your all your PCP air stuff. Kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, it looks like according to the picture, I need to attach this large end straight to the compressor. Quick disconnect, baby. All right, just like a regular air compressor. Make sure that's not gonna blow off there. 
I think that's the end that goes to my gun or scuba tank. Connect the power cord to the air compressor and follow the operating instructions. No one said anything about putting water in this baby. Huh. Oh, okay, well, let's just go on. So, connect the power cord. Now, one thing about the power, guys, and I know this from running construction air compressors, is that you want to plug this directly into the wall. Don't ever run this off an extension cord. And I can notice this is a very, you probably can't tell, but this is a very burly, very thick cord right there. But if you lose it, you, looks like you can use your computer cord. It's the same three prong there. Water freezes at about blah blah blah. So remove the rubber plug from the water tank. Fill the tank with water. Distilled water is recommended. Hmm. Okay, so it basically says remove the rubber plug. Fill the water tank. I got my level indicator there. Uh oh, I'm gonna have to drink that. That must be why it says to use distilled water. Mm, it tastes like snake poison. All right, so when I plug it in, this little light comes on right here. And that's actually the cooling, as you can see there. How funny, you hear that? Whoa! Wow, that sounds like a very powerful cooling system. Okay, I have my scuba tank ready, but I need to connect these two. So I'll just reach into my bag and pull out this male-to-male -male foster fitting. So I'll use that to connect my two hoses right here. Make sure that's nice and tight. There we go, now we're all connected. This right here is actually my inline moisture filter, so I went ahead and cleaned that out, got some new, uh, Moisture absorbing media in there, ready to go. All right, you guys, under basic operation, number one, it says place the air compressor on the ground or floor. So you never want to put this on a table. Plug it into a 110 volt outlet. Connect your air gun, reservoir, cylinder, or tank to the fill hose, which we've done. So it says the top of the water tank level needs to be at least 80%. So it has to maintain 80% full on your water tank. Turn on the cooling system by pressing down on the cooling button, so we know how to do that. It says turn on the air compressor by pressing down on this little button. Now you're not going to be able to hear anything I say when this is running, so I'm just going to read the rest of the basic operation here. It says monitor the air compressor and air gun, air cylinder, or tank when you are filling. Do not leave the air compressor and or air gun, air cylinder, or tank being filled unattended. The air compressor will automatically shut off after the set desired maximum fill pressure is reached. However, it can be manually stopped by pressing the O symbol on the air compressor switch, which is basically the off button. It says never fill your air gun, air cylinder, or tank beyond the maximum fill pressure at room temperature. It says uh, number 10 is loosen the release valve bleed screw to release all of the air to avoid hose whip from pressure in the fill hose. So that's basically saying you're going to bleed your air with this release valve after you're done before you disconnect your whip so no one gets hurt. So it does say to set your desired fill pressure and you do that by turning the dial right here. Let's get a close up here. All right, so just for kicks, we're going to go 4,000 and see what happens. Now, as soon as I turn this on, this is going to come on. That's going to be telling me the temperature of my air compressor. So I'm going to let this get up to speed. Then I'm going to go ahead, turn this on. And the very important thing to remember that they don't tell you in the manual is you want to open this up. So I like to turn my air compressor on and then real fast, open your tank all the way. Of course, allowing the air to get in so you don't build up pressure in that hose right there. Which, if it does, it'll just blow the burst disc right here. I've done that on my young hang before.
that popping noise was my hose popping a hole in it. So cheap Chinese fill station. Fortunately, I have another cheap Chinese fill station right inside. All right, guys, I actually turned the compressor off because my hose sprung a leak, but I got a new hose on there. I'm at about just under 4,000 PSI. I'm going to go ahead and set the automatic shutoff to 4,500 right there. Fire this all up and see how much longer it takes to top off my tank. Beautiful, you guys. I set it at 4,500 PSI and it just shut off at 4,500 PSI. Beautiful. A full 4,500 PSI right there. That is great. Now I can slip that in my custom made tank holder. And fill up my Brocock Commander. He's all ready for some air. Anyway, I'm about to get a party started. I'm going to fill him up and take my FX crown. And we're going to have a shooting party with my dad and my uncle off the deck. So that'll be fun. All thanks to my Benjamin Recharge. Thank you, Mr. Recharge. Thumbs up for the Recharge. Let me tell you what I liked about it. I like the fact that I just put water in it. And that was all I had to do. I like the fact that it has a super gnarly, very aggressive cooling system. So super, super impressive on the cooling system. I like that when both lights are on, you know you're good. So it has two lights right there. It stayed about 60 degrees the entire time. That was it. And then when I cooled it off and let the cooling system run, afterwards it went down to about 32, even 26 degrees. This gauge right here works really good. This thing definitely works. I also like the fact that, you know, it shuts off after 40 minutes. That's a big plus with me. I also like the fact that at just 44 pounds, I was able to carry it upstairs and into the garage and back down with no problems. My back doesn't hurt at all, so that's cool. Most of that compressors, you wouldn't be able to move without a dolly. I also like the build quality. It's fit and finish is very nice. It's easy to use, and that's why I picked it. It's, uh, it's as great as I thought it would be. It was really... Good not to have to worry every time I did the young hang. I was always waiting for something to blow up or, you know, having to check it. So definitely, you guys, if you're getting serious about PCP shooting and you think it might be time to get yourself a real air compressor, I'd say the Benjamin Recharge is a very, very good choice. Anyway, that's what I chose. That's been my review. I'll check back in with you guys in about 90 days and give you my 90-day uh, opinion, but I'm not anticipating any problems with this. And uh, it's time for me to get out of here. I'm going to go do some shooting. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.